Hey girl, it's Ryan Morrell, and girl, in today's video, we will be talking about Chrome extensions, specifically my top 10 must-have Chrome extensions. And I got this idea from this video over here, which popped on my recommended box, and I thought, wow, that is such a genius video idea because I feel like Chrome extensions are one of those tiny, tiny things that we don't really think about, but they actually do a lot for us. So girl, it's time that they get the attention and recognition that they deserve. And I've been using Chrome extensions since middle school, so I think that I have a pretty good grasp on what to expect and what to look for in a Chrome extension. And I've definitely gathered some of my favorites throughout the years, and I just want to share them with you. Before we get on with that, if you're not yet part of our little family, I would love to have you be a part of it, so make sure to just hit that subscribe button down below. If you want to watch more of my college videos, my college playlist will be linked down below, or just click this i card. Be like, that's everything I want to say. So. Let's get on. So the first two extensions I have are for your mail, Gmail specifically. So I'm sorry to all the Yahoo users. <laughs> okay, the first is Good Mail Checker. And basically, it just shows you how many unread mail you have. So when you install this extension, you'll see a tiny mail icon on the right side of your website bar. Is that what you call it? Girl, you know what I'm talking about. Basically, it'll display the number of unread emails you have. So I really like this because it tells me whenever I have new mail, so I don't have to constantly go on the Gmail website and check if I have new mail. And this is really helpful, especially if you're someone who likes to send emails a lot and you're constantly waiting for emails. However, there's one group of people who I think this won't be useful for because you know there are two types of email owners. There's a one group of people who like to clean their emails so they don't like having unread emails and then the other type, these are the people who have like 3,000 plus unread emails. So for those type of people, I don't think this will help because there'd really be no point to it if it shows a number like 3,592. I feel like you wouldn't really notice if you get new emails because the number is so high but for those of you who do like to clean out your emails, this would be a really good extension for you. Okay, the next is Checker Plus for Gmail. This is very similar to the first one. The only difference is that you can send emails using this extension. So when you click the icon, it'll open a little window for you. And if you click the plus button, you can write mail. And just like the last extension, this also shows you how many unread emails you have. For me, I don't really use this one anymore. I prefer the other one because when I write emails, I actually like to go on the Gmail website. But if you're someone who likes to send a lot of like super quick emails, this is the one for you. Okay, next is Momentum. And I have been using this also since middle school, girl. Like, I remember when just everyone suddenly had this. It was like such a trend. People would be like, where do you get that? Where do you get that? How do you download that? And it was like such a huge thing back in middle school. And I still use it until now. I don't know how to describe this, but it's kind of just like a screen saver when you open a new tab. So every day they show you a really beautiful nature picture and a quote at the bottom. And you know me, I'm a sucker for pictures and I love quotes. So that's why I really love this extension. But aside from that, it also shows you the time. It also says good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. So it feels very personalized. And that's really the main reasons that I use this extension just because I like the really nice background I think it's really aesthetic, but this extension does have other functions So on the top right they give you the weather in your location I don't really use this because in the Philippines girl the weather is always like from 32 to 40 degrees So it's always hot so it doesn't really matter aside from that in the top left there's links so you can add like a new link as the shortcut. And then in the middle here, it asks, what is your main focus for today? And you can actually input like study there. And it's so cute. It's, it just says today study. And then if you're done with it, you can check it. And then on the bottom right corner, there's like a to do tab, which I think is really, really nice. And you can enter like things to do and you can check it off when you're done. So I think this is a really, really handy extension to have. Um, I just don't use the to do options because they have a separate app for that. But I really like this because it looks really aesthetic. It just looks very sleek, very minimalistic, and I just love it. Next, we have ad block and self-explanatory, it blocks ads. So you know when you're reading articles, it's always usually on like news sites where there are like a bajillion ads. Basically, when you turn this extension on, it gets rid of all the ads. Not that that's a really big deal. I know some people don't really care about ads. I don't really care that much, but I find that the flow of my 
reading. <laughs> the flow of my reading is way smoother when I don't see ads floating around. And you know, if you can eliminate the little things that distract you, then why not? If you can do it for free, why not? That's why I really enjoy this extension. Okay, next is Todoist. When you click on the Todoist icon, you can enter things you have to do. And I really like this because instead of having sticky notes on your desktop, which I don't really like because I don't think the stickies app sticky notes are cute. <laughs> so that's why I don't use them. But this one is just very like sleek. It's not like just displaying itself all the time. It's like it when you want to see it. And if you don't want to see it, you don't have to see it. That's why I like it. Again, it just looks very sleek, very minimalistic, um, very modern looking. I will have to say there is a little bit of lag. <laughs> when you click on it like a one second lag which really it's not a big deal but i just wanted to tell you guys in case you're wondering how fast it is the next one is weaver weaver i don't know why i did that so i haven't fully explored this extension because i only use it for the very basic function which is to highlight <laughs> So what Viva does for me, what I use it for is when you highlight it, it is immediately copied on a window. So this is really helpful if you're doing research and for example, you're reading an article and instead of copying a line and then going to your Google Docs tab, pasting it, then going back to the article tab and copying it and going back to Google tab and then pasting it, instead of doing that, like going back and forth, you can just highlight everything that you want to copy in the article and then after you're done reading the entire article, you can just go on the window and then copy everything everything that you've highlighted and then paste it on your Google Docs tab. So, you know, it eliminates that whole back and forth situation, which can get pretty time consuming. I don't know, for me, this app just makes me more efficient when it comes to doing research. Next, we have MailTrack and I've talked about MailTrack a couple of times already because I really do love it. And this is also one of the things I've been using since middle school. And basically what MailTrack does is it informs you once your email has been opened. And this is really helpful because sometimes, you know, when we send emails to professors and they like don't respond and you're just like confused, like did they open it and just ignore it or did they not read it at all? This will really help you because once they open it, MailTrack tells you they've opened it, but they don't respond. Then you can send them another email, which is totally fine because now you know that they've opened your first one anyways even for like group mates you know sometimes you send group mate stuff and they just don't respond because it's mail they think that there's no c in but there is so then you can be like hey i sent you an email last night with your part and you didn't respond even though i know you saw it and they're gonna be like I didn't know that you saw that I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Next is Google Docs Offline. So I think this is the only extension that you don't actually have to download. And I didn't even know this was an extension until I checked my extensions tab and this was one of them. And I thought this is like one of the best ones. So let's include it. <laughs> so Google Docs Offline basically allows you to edit your Google Docs offline. This is super duper helpful because in Ateneo at least, we have classrooms that don't get Wi-Fi, which is like, but yeah, there are just some places where you don't get Wi-Fi, but you still want to work on your paper or you still want to, you know, do this and that on Google Docs. Being able to access Google Doc offline is honestly so, so, so helpful. The only downside though, and I'm not exactly sure if this is true or I just don't know how to do it. It can only work for one email on your laptop. So for example, in this laptop, I actually have three Chrome users. I have my YouTube Google account, my Ateneo Google account, and then my ISM Google account. I can only use the offline feature on my Ateneo account because when I tried to activate the online feature on my YouTube account it said that another account is already using the offline feature so I couldn't I don't know if Chrome has updated it if more accounts can use the offline feature but yeah that's kind of annoying for me because now if I want to do things offline I'm only allowed to use my Ateneo account so that's just one thing to keep in mind that if you're gonna activate the offline feature make sure to activate it on the user or on the google account that you know you use the most next is google dictionary what it does is when you tap on a word you don't know it gives you the definition and i just prefer this over like the one that's already installed because i feel like this one is more accurate that's why i have it and next is google translate and this is super helpful um especially when i took language classes i don't anymore so i don't use it anymore but back in middle school especially and high school this really really helped a lot next is memorize and i used to use this um basically what is this is you can program it to ask you questions every however many minutes or seconds you want so you can program it to ask you a biology question every 20 seconds or every one minute or every five minutes 
minutes or every 10 minutes. And the reasoning behind this is that, you know, you get to test yourself even while you're doing other things on your laptop. The only reason why I don't use it anymore is because it's really time consuming to set it up because obviously you have to make the question and then the answer and it's very specific with its format. So obviously if you want to ask yourself like a hundred questions, it'll probably take you like 20 minutes to just set it up. For me, like I just really don't have that time. What I want it to do is I want to just be able to transfer all of my questions from Quizlet and then transfer it to the Memorize app because that would be amazing but unfortunately it does not do that so yeah but to those of you who want to try this out i think it's a super cool extension and i think the logic behind it is really really great and it's really really helpful if you have the time to again set it all up so the last one is dark reader and i find this so cute because the icon is actually darth vader what this does is it turns your entire screen black basically it puts your entire screen on dark mode. And I know there are so many people who love dark mode, you know, the new iOS 13 dark mode. This is basically dark mode for your laptop. And it's really, really helpful, especially at night, because I also have an app that makes my entire screen warm, so it's less painful on the eyes at night. But sometimes that's still like not enough. It's still way better to have the entire screen black. It's just, I don't know, it's just better for your eyes at night and easier on the eyes. So this does that. The only thing though is that, I don't know, like it still needs a little bit of technical assistance because when I turn this on, it works amazingly, black screen, all that. But then when I turn it off, it makes the sides of my Google Doc black. And I just find it weird and I can't turn it off until I turn the entire extension off. So for me, it's kind of like not very efficient because I have to actually go to the extension tab turn it off rather than just clicking the icon to turn it on and off. So I only use this during nights when I know that I'm gonna be working very, very late and I really need to just have the screen block to help my eyes. So yeah, I don't use this all the time, only sometimes, but you know, if you aren't bothered by like the black bar thing, then go ahead, girl. By the way, I forgot to mention that I am mentioning 12. That's because this one and Memorize are extensions that I don't super duper love and don't use a lot, but I think they still could be really helpful, so I'm still including them anyways. That's why. So those are my top Chrome extensions. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button and click that subscribe button. I'll see you next week for another video, and always remember you're just as beautiful with makeup as you are without. Bye!